go ahead and get right into it. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is going to be your first impression and your branding. And the idea is, is that when someone goes to your Etsy shop, people should just be able to look at your shop and know exactly what your shop is about and what you're selling. And I think you're doing a pretty good job of that here with this banner photo that you have. I could see, you know, the purses, the key wristlets that you have. Um, but I do think this can be slightly improved. Um, in my opinion, the best type of banner photos are ones where you have photos of what you're selling and some text to go along with it. And I'll show you some examples here in a second. And here I think you have a pretty good logo, but I also think this can be improved slightly. Um, I like logos that are kind of more like have a, that are very simplistic. They have a white background, you know, easy to read text, something just simple, like maybe with like an abbreviation of your shop inside of a circle. And I'll show you some examples here as well. And then you have a really nice profile pic. This is pretty much exactly what you want. You just want to have a nice headshot where we can see your whole face, a photo with good lighting. And you want to make sure that you have a nice big smile which uh, you do, so good job on the profile pic, and for the most part, good job on your first impression and branding. Um, but as always, when I do these critiques, I like to show people other shops in similar niches, because one of the best tips I can give you is you wanna find other successful shops on Etsy in the same niche as you that are successful, um, and you want to study their shops. Now, we don't wanna copy their products or designs or anything like that, but we do wanna copy like how they have their store set up, their first impression, their branding, their announcement, photos, thumbnails, SEO, titles, tags, descriptions, things like that. So I was just doing a little research on some other shops that sold similar products as you. So like for example, when we come to this shop right here, we pretty much know right away what this shop is about because they have photos of what they're selling and they have a little bit of text here. In my opinion, I think I mentioned these are the best type of banner photos. It's just really easy for the customer to understand right away what the shop is about. Here they have a pretty good logo and a nice profile pic. Let's take a look at the next one here. So again, we're gonna see the same thing where they have photos of what they're selling and some text to go along with it. I can see leather, toiletry bags, wallets, and cases, and I see the photos, so it's easy for the customer to understand what the shop is about. And this one, and this is what I'm talking about right here, about a nice, just simplistic logo, you know, like an abbreviation of their shop inside of a circle. You can even find it, and then not the best profile pic, but it still works. And let's just take a look at a couple other ones that I also found that I thought were pretty good. But for the most part, I think the best ones were, it's a nice logo too, for the ones I showed you in the beginning here, these two. But now let's go back to your shop and let's take a look at your announcement. And the first thing that I like about your announcement is that it is updated for the current month. I also like to update my announcement usually around the first of each month, around the first of each month. I think it just gives, you know, my shop a nice fresh and, um, you know, um, up to date look. If we go to my shop and take a look at my announcement, this is my shop right here. I mainly sell t shirt, print on demand products. When we look at my announcement, we're going to see that it's been updated for the 1st of April and for the current year. And my announcement is basically bullet points with emojis talking about the benefits of my shop. So the first thing that I say is have a question, send me a message. I usually respond within minutes. Everything in my shop comes with free shipping, my production time, shipping time, how many happy customers and reviews that I have, that I'm a family man and small business owner, a call to action, and then links to my two other Etsy shops with emojis. And this is a real popular style on Etsy. You'll see a lot of other shops doing something kind of similar like this. So you might want to consider doing something like that for your shop. Now, I'm going to get into all of your photos and listings here in a second. Um, I just want to continue on the home page. So you have 93 listings, so good job. And I'm just trying to do the math in my head and it looks like it all adds up. It's just really important that every listing that you have is in a section. It's gonna make it easier for your customers to browse your shops, it's gonna make it easier for your customers to find what they're looking for. Because if I'm just looking for like a uh, signature IT bag or a clear it bag, I can just click on that section. I don't have to scroll down here to the bottom of your page to find what I'm looking for. So just keep up the good work there and make sure every listing that you have is in a section. Let's see how many sales do you have. 301 sales, okay, good job, congratulations. And let's see how many reviews. Okay, six or 87 reviews, so good job again. Towards the end of the critique, I'm gonna show you how I get really long paragraph five-star reviews with photos. And now let's go ahead and take a look at your About Me section. And for the About Me section, you want to have photos, uh, video, and text. And for the text, you wanna have like three to five paragraphs just telling your story, um, talking about how you got started on Etsy, and your passion for designing or creating the type of products that you're selling. And it looks like you're doing a really good job of that here. So good job on the text. And for the photos, you just want to have like photos of you making the products that you sell. You want to have photos of the, of your workspace, like where you make the products that you sell. You also want to have photos of the materials that you use to make the products that you sell. You basically want to like show the process of how your um, products are made. 
You can also do like lifestyle photos. You can do um, photos of like um, if you have a team that helps you, you can do a team photo, family photo. You can even do a photo of yourself. But for the most part, these actually look really good. I like what you're doing here. So let's take a quick look at this video. I'm always kind of interested. Hi, I'm Dana Robinson, CEO of Keeper. My mother, Sally, invented the original purse keeper more than 10 years ago. After Okay, so that looks great. Really good job there. Kind of doing a little introduction, uh, telling your story on the video. So a uh, really good job there. Um, you can also kind of spy on these other shops to see what other shops in the same niche as you are doing. There was a good one I think I found over here that I wanted to show. Was it this one? Uh, no, it wasn't, but this one actually looks pretty good. So here we can see she's showing like the process of how her products are made or her making the products. Where was that other one that I found? Was it this one? Maybe it was the last one. Yeah, I think it was this one. Yeah, so right here, you can see she has a photo of her knitting or sewing, her designing on the computer. So this is a good one too, showing just like the process of how her products are made. Um, but for the most part, I think you're doing a really good job with your About Me. So good job there. Now let's go ahead and keep going. So good job on having all of your social uh, media handles. Good profile pic. And let's take a look at your shop policies, shipping, payment options, returns, exchanges, cancellations. Okay, so this, this looks good. You're just missing an FAQ section. So you want to have a frequently asked questions section. You just want to ask yourself, like, what are some common questions that my customers might have about the type of products that I'm selling? If you keep getting the same questions sent to you over and over again, you can use that as well. And again, I would recommend that you kind of spy on these shops that are similar to yours to kind of see what your competitors are doing to kind of get some ideas. You don't want to copy, but you just want to uh, get some inspiration do something similar. So let's see if I can find a good one. If I can't, I'll just show you mine, but I want to show you one that's in your niche because I think it will be a little more relevant. Um, I'm kind of striking out here. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so it looks like nobody, none of these shops wants to have an FAQ. Um, okay, so here we go. So right here, we're gonna see the shop has a frequently asked questions section. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine. So this is actually a really good example of how you want your FAQ section to look, to look like. Usually I, I like to recommend like three to six questions, but like I said, this is a good example right here. If we go to my shop, I also have a pretty detailed FAQ section. We're going to see frequently asked questions section one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it's really important that you have that FAQ section filled out at the bottom because it's going to make your shop look more professional, more credible. It's going to give the customer more confidence to do business with you. And who knows, it might even have a question. And if you're able to answer it in the FAQ, it might even uh, end up leading to a sale. So I uh, definitely want to get that filled out at the bottom. But other than that, you know, I think you got a really good shop here. I really like what I'm seeing. The only thing that I'd recommend that you change or consider improving on, at least regarding the homepage, would be to maybe consider get a different banner photo. Uh, one kind of like maybe like this or, kind of, or up here, let me show you. Like the ones I showed you at the beginning here, where you have some photos of what you're selling and some text to go along with it. Maybe get a different logo. Now, I don't think those are going to make or break you. Those are just something to consider. Um, your announcement updated, but maybe consider doing like some bullet points and emojis like I am for my announcement for my shop. Keep up the good work and have every listing in the section. The about me section looked really good, but I would recommend that you add in an FAQ section at the bottom here. But other than that, everything else looks really good, at least regarding the homepage. So good job. Now, let's see here. I was actually taking some notes on your shop about some of the other things I wanted to talk to you about. So branding announcement about me photos, Etsy layout photos. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk to you about is going to be your photos and more specifically your thumbnails. And I cannot stress how important the thumbnails are. Every time I do a critique for someone, I always tell people that your thumbnails will make or break you. You just have to have really good thumbnails on Etsy. So what makes a good thumbnail? A good thumbnail is one where you can just look at the thumbnail and know exactly what the product is without having to read the title at the bottom. It should be a really high quality photo with high resolution. It should have good lighting. It should be bright. None of the product that you're selling should be cut off. It should be, uh, should be very well centered, which you're doing. You want to have a little space at the top, bottom, and both sides. So good job there. You also want to use uh, white backgrounds, which you're doing as well. And when it comes to your thumbnails, you just want to think like out of a magazine. The thumbnail should really pop, grab my attention, and make me want to click on it. And I think you're doing some really good things with your thumbnails. And I think there's just a couple things you can actually just improve to uh, make them better. So the things that I really like is you're using a white background. It's well centered. It's got good lighting. You know, it's pretty easy for me to understand right away what these, uh, what the product is. The only thing that I think that needs to be kind of improved on, it just seems to be a little, and, and I could just be, I could be wrong here. It just seems to be a little out of focus. It doesn't seem to be that sharp, like the resolution of the photo 
doesn't seem too crisp or sharp. So if there's any way that you can change or improve that, because one thing that you want to do is you want to go to these other shops that are successful similar tiers and you want to study their thumbnails. And basically you want to study these shops thumbnails and look for similarities. And when you find similarities in these successful shops thumbnails, you want to take those similarities and then implement them into your shop. So like when we go to this shop right here, you can just see that the quality of the photo or the resolution is uh, very good, very nice. Let's take a look at this next one right here, see what we can learn from these guys. You see how nice these are? It's a really sharp, crisp photo. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, so these ones aren't really the best. What about this one right here? Okay, so that one's not that good either. I think it was the first ones and the last ones were the good ones. Okay, so like right here you can see, you know, these look very professional. These look like they're out of a magazine. They're high resolution, good lighting. And again, you just want to come to these shops, look for similarities in their thumbnails. And when you find those similarities, like look how nice these ones are. I think these are probably the nicest. See how nice these are, just really crisp, high resolution. You know, these look like out of a Macy's magazine right here. So this is the quality of the type of thumbnails that you want. And I cannot stress how important having good thumbnails are because it's one of the main parts of the sales process is that you have to get your listings clicked on. Um, so again, this is how I recommend that you have your thumbnails look like, just very uh, high quality photos with a really high resolution. Okay, now let's go back to your shop here. and Let's just take a look at one of your listings. So I'm just gonna click on this uh, first one right here. And the first thing that I want to talk to you about regarding your listings are going to be your photos. And again, I cannot stress how important the photos are. The reason the photos are so important is because the customer, you know, they can't hold your product. They can't touch your product. All they have to go off of are your photos. So that's why your photos really need to be on point. And the first thing that I would recommend would be to add in more photos. So Etsy gives us 10 photo slots and we want to try to use all 10 of them. I would also recommend that you add in a video. One of the reasons why it's important to have a video is because if I go to Etsy and I just type in like key wristlet, when your listing has a video in it, when the customer hovers over the thumbnail, the video will start to play. So that's going to like uh, raise or create curiosity in the customer. It's going to help your listings get clicked on. It's going to help increase your click through rate. And it's pretty easy to make a video. You can just take your phone, record the product. I would just recommend that you have good lighting when you take the video. Um, so try and get a, try and get a video for your listings. Um, let's go back here. Let's just take a look at these. And so again, remember, we just want to think like out of a magazine when it comes to our listings. And actually, let's just go ahead and take a look at some of these other shops listings to see if we can learn. So let's just see if we can find an actual wristlet. So let's see here, wrist. Did I spell it right? It looks like I did. Okay, so let's just go ahead and click on this first one right here. Again, you want to study these other shops uh, listings um, and you basically want to, again, look for similarities. And then when you find similarities in these successful listings with their photos, then you just want to take those similarities and then implement them into your shop. So this looks like it actually could be a pretty good example uh, listing that we can learn from. So the first thing that I'm seeing is that it looks like they're using all 10 photos. They also have a video. So let's just take a quick look at this. Okay, so you can see this is probably taken with their phone because it looks vertical. But you see what they're doing, how simple that is. That's pretty easy to make. You can just take shots and you can use, I don't know if you use Canva, but I use Canva to make some of my videos. Um, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is just drag and drop. Um, let's take a look at the rest of these photos here. So again, we can see the quality of these photos are very nice. Good resolution, good lighting. Look how nice that is. Uh, so this is a good example of how you want your photos to look like using all 10 photos also have a video another thing that you also might want to consider is to add in infographics so this is one of my t-shirt listings right here we're going to see i'm also using all 10 photos i have this nice thumbnail with the white background uh, and good lighting you can see it's a high quality image i also have a video and um, then i have the size guides and at the end, I had three extra photo slots. So what I did is I added in these infographics right here, talking about my production time, my shipping time. Then I build the credibility in my shop by talking about how many uh, reviews and sales that I have when I was established that I gladly accept returns. And then I say, want more information? Read the description, send me a message, favorite my shop, ask me about custom orders. And I'm trying to get them to engage with me. These infographics are good because not everybody is going to scroll down here and read the description. But almost everybody's going to go through the photos. That's a little tip or trick that you can use to get all of your 10 photo slots filled out. Um, so for the most part, good job with the photos. Like these ones are very nice. I really like these. 
um, but the ones of the actual product like that's very nice right there this is how you want your all your photos looking like this quality because the ones here the first ones that you have seem to be a little out of focus or could be improved on a little bit um, so yeah so just try and get all 10 photos filled out add in a video and consider adding in some infographics as well and I'm just going to pause the video real quick because the lab or the fan on my laptop is starting to make a little noise so I want to make sure you're able to hear what I'm saying Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at your SEO. So obviously the SEO is very important. The idea with the SEO is that you want to use keywords that are being auto-suggested by Etsy, relevant to what you're selling, and if possible, low in competition. You want to pretend like you're a detective and you want to put yourself in the shoes of the customer. And you just want to ask yourself, like, what would someone type in Etsy if they were searching for my product? And then you start typing away. When you find keywords that are being auto-suggested by Etsy and relevant to what you're selling, then you want to use them. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this first keyword that you have and let's see if it's being auto suggested by Etsy. So I'll paste that into a uh, search and I'm not seeing anything pop up, but if we were to maybe do something like, let's see here, key wristlet, we're going to see there's a bunch of auto suggested keywords and basically we want to go through these and anyone that's relevant to what we're selling, then we want to use it. Let's try another thing. Let's try like maybe key holder or something like that. Okay, so here's some more auto-suggested keywords. Let's find one that might, might be a little more specific because I think this is for like a, a wall when you're hanging your keys on your wall. Let's try maybe like wristlet, just wristlet like that. Wristlet keychain. So again, here are some more auto-suggested keywords. One thing that you can do is you can just type in the keyword, hit space bar. You can see there's going to be a bunch of auto-suggested keywords that pop up. You can also just go through the alphabet and just see what other auto-suggested keywords pop up as well. And again, we just want to go through these and anyone that's relevant to what we're selling. So like wristlet bracelet, for example, we just want to load up our character space, our title field with as many of these auto suggested keywords as possible. If we go to my um, t-shirt listing right here, we're going to see it's basically just one auto suggested keyword after another. And I'm using all the character space in my title field. So you're going to see here, it's one, two, three, four lines of keywords. When I go to your, um, your listing right here, I'm going to see it's only one about, you know, it's only about one line of keywords. That tells me that you have a lot more character space left in your title field where you can add in more um, keywords. So just to recap for your title, you want to use um, auto suggested keywords that are relevant to what you're selling if possible low in competition and also use all the character space in the title field. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the description. Okay, so um, it, look, it looks good, but honestly, in my opinion, it's not enough. I think it needs to be beefed up a little bit more. Uh, let me show you what I'm doing, because it's a good start. But I would recommend that you do, and that you do something like what I'm doing with my description. So I like to have these headers in capital letters with stars saying how to order, shipping time, returns and refunds, questions, custom orders, links. Then I have a paragraph, paragraph or two about each one of the garments that I'm selling. I think when you have it set up like this, it just gives a nice clean and professional look. And I'm giving a lot of good information to the customer to hopefully motivate them to make a purchase. So you might want to consider doing uh, your description like mine. You can actually just copy and paste mine and use it as a template. A template if you want, you can just change out what you have in the paragraphs. Um, and let's see what's next. Uh, next is gonna be the tags. So let's go back to your listing and take a look at your tags. So this is where the tags go down here, where it says explore related searches. And so it gives us 13 tag slots. And you want to make sure that you're using all 13 of them. And it looks like you are. So good job on the, on the tags. The way I like to find my tags is I like to use this Everbee Chrome extension on the side here. And basically what I do is I go to Etsy and I just type in the type of product that I'm trying to sell. So we'll just stick with this example of key wristlet. And what I will do is I will come over here and click on product analytics. And what's going to happen is that Everbee is going to do its thing. And it's going to pull up all of the listings that sell this type of product, key wristlet. And what we can do is we can actually uh, scroll over, go to where it says total sales, click on this down arrow twice, and we can categorize all of these listings by the best sellers. And then we can basically just spy on these uh, best sellers right here and see what tags they're using. So let's see if I can find one that's kind of similar to what you're selling. Uh, let's see here, I'm trying to find one that says key wristlet. Okay, so maybe this one right here. So what we can do is we can spy on this listing. We can see, you know, some of the keywords that you're using, they're using in their title, but more importantly, we can actually see what tags they're using. 
and we can actually just take these tags and we can use them in our own listings. So this is the way that I like to get my tags just by spying on other successful listings and just using the tags that they're using in my own listings. And another reason why I really like Everbeat is because you can spy on your competitors. So if we go to, let's see, uh, this shop right here. So let's find a shop that's very successful. You know, it's got a good amount of sales and we can spy on this shop, click on product analytics. We can categorize their listings by the best sellers and we can see what this shop's best sellers are. And that might give us some ideas on what to design for. We don't want to copy, but we just want to use like use this information as inspiration. And we can see here that these are some of this, they're some of their best sellers. So is this a wristlet? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so personalized leather wristlet. So this could be a good idea. I don't know if you're selling any personalized products, but that's uh, one of the really cool things about Etsy is you can do personalized. So you might want to consider doing that. Okay, looks like you are. Oh, this is for the purses. Okay, right here. Okay, so good job on doing personalized stuff. Um, but those are the two reasons why I like using uh, Everbeat because you can spy on your competition and uh, it's where I like to get my tags from. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link for Everbeat. They have a free trial if you want to give them a try. But let's go back to your shop now and let's go back to the notes. Let's keep going. So next up is going to be sales and free shipping. And I would highly recommend that you have everything in your shop on sale and on free shipping. Now, it looks like you have everything on sale, so good job there. But I'm just seeing if you have, if you're doing free shipping. I actually uh, am in Mexico right now. So maybe that's why. No, it says United States. So I don't know if you're doing free shipping or not. Um, but the point I want to make here is that I would recommend that you have everything in your shop on sale and on free shipping all the time, 365 days of the year. There's a few reasons why you want to do this. The main reason why you want to do it is that Etsy is just going to give your listings a natural boost in the rankings for your listings that are on sale and on free shipping. Etsy has done a ton of research and they have found that the listings that tend to sell the best are ones that are on sale and on free shipping. And since Etsy is in business for one reason, and that's just to make money, they're just going to give your listings a natural boost in the rankings for your listings that are on sale and on free shipping. So that's like the main reason why you want to do it. If we go to my t-shirt shop here, we are going to see that out of 2,761 listings, all of them are on sale all the time um, and free shipping 365 days of the year. And there's a few other reasons why I like to do this. One is going to help my listings stand out in search. People are going to see the free shipping button. They're going to see that it's on sale. So it's going to help my listings get clicked on. It's going to help increase my click through rate. But another reason why I really like to do this is that's going to help my listings get found in search when people search using the filters. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So let me just go back to this listing right here that we were looking at earlier. I'm just going to copy the title and I'm going to go to Etsy. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to see if I can find your listing. Okay. And look at this. Here you are. You're on the first page, second row, but that's an ad, but here you are. Okay. So very cool. So I type in this keyword and here you are you're on the first page, second row. But the thing is that there's a lot of savvy Etsy customers that shop using these filters here. So you want to be in as many of these filters as possible. So that if someone searches this way, you know, uh, your listings will still pop up. So if I were to type in that keyword, you're going to be on the first page, second row. And if I click on uh, one of the on sale filters and hit apply, we're going to see that your listing is still here. But if I were to get rid of on sale and say, yeah, but I just want something that's on free shipping and I hit apply, we're going to see that your listings are going to uh, disappear. They're gone because they're not on free shipping. Um, maybe you are doing free shipping. It could be because I'm in a different country right now. Um, but that's why you're going to see a lot of the top shops have all their listings on sale and on free shipping all the time. So that if someone searches that way using the filters, their listings will still pop up. And I would actually take it a step further and do 24 hour sales. So if we go to my t-shirt listing here, we're going to see that I have this countdown timer in yellow text that says sale ends in seven hours right here. If we go to your listing, we're going to see that your listing is also on sale. It's 15% off, but it doesn't have that countdown timer in yellow text. So why is that? The reason mine has the countdown timer is because I'm doing a 24 hour sale. I'm doing a sale from uh, April 19th to April 19th. And these countdown timers are very strong or powerful because they create urgency. It's called fear of loss. People are going to be in fear that if they don't make the purchase right now, they're going to lose out on the deal. And the way that I set these 24 hour sales up is I go to my shop manager. And then I go to marketing, sales and discounts, 
run a sale. I like to do 20%. Today is the 19th. So if we want to do a 24 hour sale for tomorrow, we would go April 20th to April 20th. We're going to name the sale, hit continue, add in all our sections. And when you do that, you're going to get this countdown timer in yellow text that says sale ends in so many hours. And like I said, this is going to create urgency. If someone's kind of like on the fence about buying one of your products, this is going to be one of the things that might motivate them to actually take action and make the purchase because they're going to be in fear that if they don't buy it right now, they're going to lose out on the deal. And like I was saying, the way that I set these up is I just wake up in the morning, I fulfill my t-shirt orders, I make a 24 hour sale for the following day. It literally takes less than one minute to set up and I do these every day, 365 days of the year. The way that you do free shipping is you go back to your shop manager, but this time we're going to go to settings and we want to go to shipping settings and we're basically going to want to create a free shipping profile. So there should be a button that pops up here that says create profile and there it is right there. So we click on that and you're just going to want to fill out the information in this box here. And then right here, you want to check off free domestic shipping. Now me, I do both domestic and international, but that's your call. But at a minimum, you at least want to have free domestic shipping checked off. Then you're going to name the profile, hit save profile. Once you save the profile, you're going to want to go to your listings and you're going to want to add that free shipping profile to all of your listings. And you can do this in bulk fashion. There's going to be a box in the top left corner here that we can click on. And what that's going to do, that's going to select all uh, the listings, 40 for that for the page. Then you click on editing options, scroll down and you click on change shipping profiles. Once you've clicked on change shipping profiles, you will be able to select the free shipping profile that you just created. So that's how you do uh, free shipping. And let's get out of here and go back to your shop. Um, okay, so next up is going to be Etsy ads. It looks like you are doing Etsy ads. So I'm glad to see that. Um, I also do Etsy ads. Me personally, I'm doing a daily budget of $5 a day. I've been able to get profitable at that amount. But if you can afford to do more, like uh, 10, 15, 20, I'd recommend this. It's going to get you more exposure. And the more exposure you have, the better chances you're going to have to get more sales. Now, if you have a low budget, I would recommend at least a minimum of $1 a day just to get you out there, to get you more exposure, to hopefully get you some more sales coming in. But in my experience of running ads on Etsy over the years, they have been good to me and I like to recommend them to people. Um, next up is going to be reviews. Yes, so if we go back to, let me just kind of get rid of, there's a lot of tabs here. Let's get rid of these ones. Boom, boom. Okay, that's a little better there. Okay, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, re reviews. So if we go back to my shop here, we're going to see that I have a good amount of reviews. I'm up to like 1,500. Well, a lot of the reviews that I get are very uh, positive, five-star reviews. Let's see if I can find some good ones right here. Um, definitely recommend. Let's see if there's another good one. We have to go to the next page, but basically I just get a lot of positive reviews and I also get a lot of people to leave photos. So if we go to one of my t-shirt listings here, we're going to see all the photos that people have left. This is really good for social proof. This can give my potential customers a lot of confidence to do business with me when they see all of these happy customers that have uploaded these photos onto my shop. Um, the way that I'm able to get these five star reviews with photos is every customer that I get, I send them four specific messages and I'm actually going to send this word document to you so that you can use it. Um, the first thing is you just want to make sure that you have the Etsy seller app downloaded on your phone so that you get notified every time you get a sale. And when you get a sale and hear the ka-ching sound, you want to send this first message right here that says, hello, uh, thank you so much for your purchase. I will send you a tracking link once I have it. If for any reason there's a problem when you receive your order, send me a message so I can fix it ASAP. Thanks again and take care, Mike. So this is a really good message to send just to touch base with them and acknowledge that you actually received their order. But it's also a really good message to send to avoid getting negative reviews because if something happens to their order, if it gets lost in the mail, if it's damaged when they receive it, instead of them going straight to Etsy and just leaving you a nasty one-star review, you've already planted the seed for them to come to you first so you at least have the opportunity to fix whatever the problem is. And then the second message is once you have the tracking link, you want to send it to them. So you want to say, hello, I want to let you know that your order has been shipped and it's on its way. I've copied and pasted the tracking link below so you track your order. Thanks so much and have a great day, Mike. And then you copy and paste the tracking link. People love this type of communication on Etsy. Very few Etsy sellers are even doing this and I get a ton of thank you messages after I send this second message. The third message, you want to go into your orders, you want to click on completed and you want to filter by delivered. On the delivered orders, you want to say, hello, I saw that your order arrived and I want to make sure you're happy with your purchase. 
If there's something wrong with your order, kind of let me know so I can fix it ASAP. If you absolutely love it and only if you have the time, it really help me if you could leave a quick and honest review about my service and the quality of the product. We love to see people wearing our apparel and selfies are highly appreciated. Uh, thanks so much and have a great day, Mike. So this time I'm able to get those long paragraph reviews with photos. I basically just ask them. And then the fourth message, again, you want to have it set up on your phone so that you get notified every time you get a review. And when you get a review, you want to respond by saying, hello, I just saw the awesome review you left. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I really appreciate it, Mike. So this is just a nice way to end the sale on a good note, button up the deal and express some appreciation to your customer for them leaving you a nice uh, five star review. Um, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and send this word document to you so that you can use it. Now me, I'm kind of more like serious and to the point, but if you want to use humor emojis, you know, feel free to chop this up, make it fit your brand, your style, your personality, uh, your shop. Okay. Let's go back to your shop. I'm just going to take a quick sip of coffee. So I'm starting to kind of lose my voice here. Okay. And let's get back to work here. Back to the notes. Next up is going to be. Uh, custom message. So I'm sure you're probably getting messages from customers saying, Hey, uh, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? I know I get a lot of messages like that. And there's a way that I respond to those messages. I guess I'm going to say like nine out of 10 times. And I just want to share with you that message that you can use it too. So I'm just going to go to one of my recent orders here and we'll click on that one. And a quick little side note, you might, you might already know about this, a little tip or trick, but just in case you don't, it's a good one. Um, those messages that I was just sharing with you about how to get uh, five star reviews with photos, you can actually have those messages as pre made snippets so you don't have to type it out each time. It's very convenient if you're on the road or at the grocery store or whatever. If you click on this button right here where my cursor is, you're going to see all my pre made snippets. And if you scroll down, you can save and manage the snippets. But if this person sent me a message about a custom order, I would click on my custom order snippet and I would respond by saying hello. Um, I would be more than glad to customize this for you. Please go ahead and make the purchase and then the notes of seller kindly type in the exact text you would like on the shirt. Thank you for considering my shop and I cannot wait to get started on this for you, Mike. So this is a really good way to respond to people because you're holding them by the hand, you're guiding them and you're telling them what to do. You're saying, yeah, I'd be happy to do this for you. Just go ahead and buy it or make the purchase and then leave me the instructions. A lot of the times customers need to be guided and this is a great way to respond to get the sale. And then next up is going to be star seller and let's just check to see if you are a star seller. Okay. So no, not yet, but don't worry. You'll get there. Um, you want to make sure that you're above the targets for all three of these categories. Again, this is why it's important that you have the Etsy seller app downloaded on your phone so that you get notified every time you get a message. And when you get a message, you want to respond as quickly as possible. You don't want to wait longer than 24 hours because Etsy will punish you for that. You also want to make sure that you're getting those, five star reviews. Now in my experience, I've learned there's nothing wrong with asking someone for a review. As long as you're offering a good product and a good service, people will be more than happy to do that for you. Then you want to make sure that you're getting everything shipped out on time. And when you're above the targets for all three of these categories, you're going to get the star seller badge and the star seller badge is going to make your shop look very professional, very credible. It's going to give the customer a lot of confidence to do business with you. Cause right here it's going to say star seller has an outstanding track record for providing a great customer experience and consistently earned five star reviews shipped orders on time and replied quickly to any messages they received etsy also puts the star seller badge on the thumbnail so if we go to this page right here we're going to see star seller so having the star seller badge is going to help your listings get clicked on it's going to help increase your click-through rate you can also search the star seller in the filters so right here you're going to see star seller so this is another reason why you want to be a star seller and then going back to those 24 hour sales, I was recommending that you run on a 20 on a daily basis. We are going to see that Etsy is now putting those countdown timers on the actual thumbnail. So this is just another reason why you want to run those 24 hour sales on a daily basis. Cause it's also going to help increase your click through rate. It's also going to help get your listings uh, clicked on. Okay. Let's go back to your shop here. Next up is going to be three steps to getting sales. Okay. So getting sales on Etsy, in my opinion, is really just like a three step process. The first step is that you have to get found. People have to be able to find you, you know, so how do you get found? Well, the main way you get found is just by having really good SEO using keywords that are being auto suggested by Etsy relevant to what you're selling and if possible, low in competition. And then the second step to getting sales on Etsy is that, you know, you have to get clicked on. So how do you get clicked on? Well, you get clicked on just by having really good thumbnails, thumbnails, that look like they're out of a magazine that pop that grab my attention that make me want to click on them. 
And once they've clicked on your thumbnail and they're looking at your actual listing, now you got to get them to buy. So how do you get them to buy? Well, one of the ways you get one of the ways that you get them to buy is by having really good photography, really good photos. Because like I was saying earlier, they can't hold your product, they can't touch your product. All they have to go off of are your photos. So that's why your photos really need to be on point. Then you want to make sure that you have a lot of five star reviews with photos to give the customer that confidence to do business with you. And then you just want to make sure that you're running those 24 hour sales on a daily basis to create that urgency. So when you're making new listings or duplicate listings, you just want to think about that. I have to get found, I have to get, get clicked on and I have to get them to buy. And everything that we've been talking about in this past half hour or so is going to help you accomplish that. And one thing that I just remembered that I forgot to mention when it comes to your titles and SEO, it's never a good idea to edit your titles on your current listings. Like if you're listening to me, or you're listening to this video and you're like, okay, I need to you know, use auto suggested keywords in my title. You don't want to ever edit your title. The reason why is because if you look at the beginning of your title here, you're going to see that the beginning of your title actually matches the URL at the top here. So you see how the URL and the title are matching. So if you come in here and you just edit your title, um, it's not going to match anymore with the URL. That's going to confuse Etsy and that's really bad for SEO. So if you want to, you know, edit your titles or just use different titles, I would recommend you just make brand new listings or duplicate listings. And when you make a new or duplicate listing, that listing will start off fresh. And a fresh listing will always perform a lot better than if you were to just come in here. Um, you know, first thing what I would recommend would be to maybe, you know, do a rebranding, get a really nice banner photo, get a nice uh, logo if you want. I can make one for you. I only charge like five or 10 bucks, I think. But if not, you can hire people on Etsy. You can um, hire people on Upwork or Fiverr. Um, but then it's really just gonna come down to your SEO and your photos. And I think you're doing a good job in both, but I also think you can improve in both categories as well. So the first thing that I, that I would recommend would be to work on your thumbnails. You want your thumbnails looking like that one shot that we looked at, was it this one? No, I think it might be this one right here. You know, you just, um, actually, yeah, these ones are pretty good. But remember, you just want a really high resolution photo with good lighting. You want it to be bright. You want it to be pop. To pop. You want it to look like it's from like a Macy's magazine, basically. Um, then once you've done that, you want to work on your photos. And for your photos, I would recommend the same thing. You want them to look like out of a magazine, but you want to use all 10 photos. Etsy gives us 10 slots. We want to use all 10 of them. I'd also recommend you add in a video, add in infographics, study some of those other successful listings, see what they're doing, look for similarities in several successful listings and then take those similarities implement them into your shop um, then once you've done that you want to work on your SEO so um, remember like we were saying or like I was saying you know you just want to use those auto suggested keywords that are relevant to what you're selling if possible low in competition um, and make sure you're using all of the character space in the title field I would recommend that you use Everbee for your tags I'll leave a link they have a free description or they have a free trial if you want to give them a try and then once you've done that, I would put everything on sale, put everything on free shipping, uh, run those 24 hour sales on a daily basis. That's really important. Become a star seller, get a whole bunch of five star reviews, keep running Etsy ads. And if you do all that, I think you're going to see an increase in views. And when you have an increase in views, it's going to lead to an increase in sales.